It's only the weekend. Hello, I'm Brett, your host for this evening, and welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home in beautiful Lime Bay, where this crisp and chilly December night is getting very magical, with Christmas being just two weeks away. What a lovely Saturday. It's been a busy one for us today, but I'm not going to get into it because we need to crack on with the show. Huge thank you for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. Don't forget, I have an Instagram page and a YouTube channel, both called Brett's Old Time Radio Show, and it would be absolutely brilliant if you could follow me. Feel free to send me some feedback on this and the other shows if you get a moment. Brett at touradate.co.uk. Right. Tonight is an extra long episode as we're going to conclude the Avengers because I've got an epic new series to start from next Saturday and I cannot wait to get it started. I think you're going to love it for a Saturday. So let's join the Avengers for the conclusion of A Case of Interrogation. Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo... It's a bit pinned down, I'm afraid, Mrs. Peel. Yes, Mr. Puffin, but let's counterattack. Set these balloons you were selling free and burst a few others. As the balloons floated up from the old street vendor's stall, Blackie, the assassin, worked his way to the back of the stall. The people in the street laughed at the balloons bursting. Mrs. Peel didn't laugh. She waited for Blackie and jumped in. The gun dropped to the pavement. Old Puffin grabbed it. Mrs. Peel was thrown. Blackie staggered back, picked up the sharp scissors Puffin had been using to cut the string of his balloons and plunged forward to stab Mrs. Peel when... Puffin stood amongst the wreckage of his stall, the revolver in his hand. Honey, I'm so old, and yet that's the first time I've ever killed. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 5 of this story, in which John Steed and Mother remain baffled by the whole affair, and Emma Peel is taken away for... A Case of Interrogation. Two young agents, Casper and Minnow, had disappeared mysteriously, and subsequently their contact men had been killed. It was clear that there had been a serious security leak. Wilson and Izzy Pound, Casper's two contact men, had met untimely deaths. And later, faced with these facts, Casper himself had been shot. Charles Minnow's first contact, Fillington, had also died. And Mrs. Peel had forced Mother to tell her the name of the second contact, who was surely in grave danger. The second contact had turned out to be old Herbert Puffin. And this time, Mrs. Peel had been lucky. In the struggle in Bridgewell Street, she'd narrowly escaped death. The assassin, Blackie, had been killed. Mrs. Peel was grateful and frustrated. A dead man is a dead end, Steve. Yes, see what you mean. He can't lead us to whoever he was working for. That's right. Still, it has proved quite a few things. That Minnow must have talked. Yes. Well, what's happened to old Puffin? Well, the balloon went up in every sense. He folded his stall up and disappeared in double-quick time. I don't think he'll be around for some time. Oh, I've no doubt he'll make the contact when things have cooled off. Meanwhile... Meanwhile, a full report to Mother. Any idea who the would-be assassin is? Mm Mm-mm. New to me. The boys at headquarters will run a complete check on the body. They may come up with something. I wonder what our chances are of picking up Minnow. Slight. I'm not so sure. After Casper's two contacts have been killed, he turned up as though nothing had happened. Minnow could do the same. Well, not once they realize we've killed that man. Could be that he arranged all the other deaths. If we've knocked him out, then they may silence Minnow once and for all. He has no more contact. Mm, That could be. 
Oh, well, let's think of the inner man and not the link man. Lunch, Mrs. Peel? Mm. That afternoon, in Mother's headquarters, Steed and Mother sat over coffee, staring at the forensic reports and photographs. Well, this is a pretty kettle of fish. The report is clear enough. Accurate description of the man, fingerprints, photographs. We don't know him. No one does. No police record, nothing. Even I don't know him. And I pride myself on knowing everyone. Yes, he's a new fellow, all right. The whole thing is new. The entire situation. There must be a new organization working. This is dangerous. And baffling. We haven't got a clue on him. Anonymous. Like that chap in the photograph. What the devil? Someone wants to join us. Well, I'm not expecting anyone. The concealed door at the top of the gallery started to swing inwards. Someone outside had known the correct number to dial in order to enter Mother's headquarters. Not many people had that privilege. Minna was the last link. If only we could find Minna. Someone looking for me? Minna! Well, I was just on my way home. But I thought I'd better pop in just in case something urgent had cropped up. I don't believe that. Well, then. What's been happening in the jolly old world of intrigue, eh? Mother looked at Steed, Steed looked at Mother, and they both looked towards the liquor cabinet. Uh, yeah. Have a drink, Meadow. Jolly decent of you, Mother. A large one, Mother. A very large one, Steed. Uh, <clears throat> um, a fine weather for this time of the year, eh? Well, a little cold, sir. <laughs> Your drinks. Thank you, Steed. And I'll give you a toast. To absent friends. Will you drink to that, Minnow? Yes, sir, of course. Cheers. Absent friends like this man. Mother shot a photograph of Blackie across the table at Minnow. Who? Blackie? You know him? Well, yes, of course I do. It's Sergeant Blackie. He works at... <laughs> oh, oh, no. No, no, no. I'm not falling for that one. They warned me you might try to trip me up. A little How bit. trip you up? Faking Blackie's death like that. That is no fake, Minnow. Oh, come. Now. That is no fake, Minnow. That man, Blackie, or whatever his name is, was shot and killed while attempting to murder Mr. Puffin. Puffin? <laughs> but that's ridiculous. How could anyone possibly know about Puffin? That is what we want you to tell us. Is he... Is he really dead? Really? Oh, we could run you down to the morgue to see for yourself. But that would be a waste of time. And we don't have time to waste, Minnow. No time at all. Now talk. Well, I, well, I, don't, I don't know. Well, I ought to contact Mannering first. Mannering? Colonel Mannering. Who's he? Oh, oh, now, come on, Mother. Surely you must know. I do not know, Colonel Mannering. You will please explain what you're talking about. If you don't mind, I... I think I'd like to sit down. You'd better sit down and start from the very beginning, Minnow. We want to know everything. Mrs. Peel was taking a quiet rest, her feet up and a harmless novel on her lap, when the doorbell rang. Oh, coming! Yes? Mrs. Peel, Mrs. Emma Peel. Yes? Colonel Mannering, interdepartmental security, head of Oriental Military Studies, my identity card. Mannering handed over an elaborate wallet. You'd better come in. Thank you. I'd um, be obliged if you would give the identification papers more than just a cursory glance, Mrs. Peel. I want to be sure that you know exactly who I am and what I represent. Oh, of course. Mrs. Peel studied the papers. Uh, perhaps you would be good enough to let me see your own identification papers. Of course. Mrs. Peel opened a drawer in the desk, took out a wallet, and handed it to Mannering. Thank you. You're awfully cautious. I have to be. You watch others, Mrs. Peel. We watch you. Big brother. Hmm? Uh, we would like to think our interest was more, um, paternal. Would you like a drink? No, no, thank you. Uh, drinking whilst on duty is something we discourage amongst our operatives. Too bad. I'm not on duty at the moment. Do I take it that you are, Colonel Mannering? I'll get right to the point, Mrs. Peel. I have orders here to escort you to Centre 53, where you will attend the T.O.H.E. Refresher Course A7. Perhaps you would like to examine these orders? I'll take your word for it. Oh, please, I'd rather you didn't. Here. Mrs. Peel took the documents and scanned them. 
You'll see the course is covered under secret security. Sealed instructions number 47, subsection QR 9432. Hmm. It says the course is to start immediately. As of this moment, yes. But I've been working full out on an assignment for the past 24 hours without a break. And what time? Very. Precisely why the course starts immediately, Mrs. Peel. When you are weary, when your endurance can be taxed to the limit. But the assignment I'm on hasn't finished yet. It has, as far as you are concerned. Naturally, you have a right to complain to a higher authority. Perhaps you might like to pick up that telephone and call Mother. I might just do that. You have already committed a cardinal error, admitting to me that Mother even exists. That will cost you ten demerit points. A bad start. Mannering picked up the phone and placed it in Mrs. Peel's hand. Well, go ahead. Make the call. Although I can assure you it won't do you any good. After all, he selected you for the course. Very well, Colonel Mannering. But what is the T-O-H-E course, anyway? A test of human endurance. In Mother's headquarters, Minnow had been answering questions yet again. Poor Minnow didn't know which side he was on by the time he'd finished. The T-O-H-E course? Test of human endurance? That's right. That's what he said. The T-O-H-E. Refresher course, A7. Never heard of it. Oh, well, only one way to find out. Hello, mother speaking. Put me through to security internal. Uh, security internal? What do you know about T-O-H-E refresher course, A7? Yes, A7. Well, get hold of someone who does know and ring me back. Minnow, you say you were taken to Centre 53? Yes, that's right. Well, where is it? In the country, a large house. Yes, but where? Well, I don't know. It was part of the security arrangements that I shouldn't know. I was taken there in a closed van. A small, black, closed van. A small, black, closed van was moving away from the pavement outside Mrs. Peel's apartment. In the front seat, next to the driver, smiling grimly, was Colonel Mannering. Inside, clutching the small suitcase, was Mrs. Peel. You're still lagging way behind, Steed. Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, a small black closed van turned up the driveway of a country house. It stopped at the front door. The back doors of the van were opened, and Mrs. Peel got out, blinking at the light. Colonel Mannering led her up the steps and into the reception room. At the desk, a man in army sergeant's uniform said... Good afternoon, miss. Good afternoon. Identification, please. Mrs. Peel produced the necessary papers. Thank you. Sign here, please, Mrs. Peel. As Mrs. Peel was signing the register, a door opened and a young man staggered out. He looked very disheveled and worn out, eyes bloodshot and clothes torn. Emma. Emma Peel. Didn't know you were coming here. Remember me, Paul Mullard. We were in training together. Why, yes. Yes, of course. How are you, Paul? I'm doing okay, I think. See you in the bar later. Look forward to that. Come on, you. We haven't finished with you yet. Come here. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers.
Episode 6 of this story, in which John Steed gets on the beam at last, and Emma Peel has her first experience in... A Case of Interrogation. Charles Minnow was more than a little confused. He'd returned to Mother's headquarters in all innocence to find Mother in a black mood. Three men had died, and it was clear that their deaths were a direct result of a leakage of information from the T-O-H-E refresher course A-7 that Minnow had just taken at Centre 53. But Minnow couldn't tell Mother and John Steed where Centre 53 was. He'd been taken there in a small, black, closed van and subjected to the toughening up treatment in strict secrecy. And now, without anyone else being aware of it, Mrs. Peel was about to undergo a similar experience. This is the key to your room, Mrs. Peel. I trust you enjoy your stay. Thank you. I think perhaps enjoy is the wrong word, isn't it, Colonel Lannery? Uh, we can at least start off pleasantly, Mrs. Peel. Uh, let's have a drink in the bar, shall we? Mannering placed a hand under Mrs. Peel's elbow and guided her towards a door. Inside, the bar was filled with officers of all ranks. I think you will enjoy it in here. Once you're settled in, we've got a jolly fine bunch here. Fine, spirit of comradeship. And we try to make everyone stay as comfortable as possible. They appear jolly enough. Plenty of recreation, too. Sports, that kind of thing. I'm particularly concerned about the men's well-being. Afternoon, Johnson. Afternoon, sir. Johnson, an RAF man, grinned with a split lip and adjusted a piece of sticking plaster that covered a bruise on his forehead. Uh, gentlemen, uh, may I introduce Mrs. Emma Peel? Uh, this is the spy sacrosanct. It's the only place in the whole building where you can relax, uh, where you can switch off. But um, let me remind you, the course has begun. You may be taken from here and interrogated at any time. Any time at all. In Mother's headquarters, the bewildered Minnow goes over it all again. So, Minnow, the course was to test your breaking point, your reliance as an agent. Well, that's what Colonel Mannering said. He had papers to prove it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mother? Yes. Yes. Thank you. The course was A7 under the direction of Colonel Mannering? Yes, Mother, that's it. Doesn't exist. But surely... No course, A7, and no Colonel Mannering. It's clever. You have to admit it's clever. Turning our own secret bureaucracy into a weapon. That's right. Tied us up with our own red tape, and it's so simple. Persuade our agents the course is genuine, get their full cooperation, and then interrogate them for as long as they like. Until they talk. But that isn't true. It isn't. I got a class one pass mark. They interrogated me for hours, but I didn't talk. I didn't tell them a darn thing. I swear I didn't talk. You didn't? Well, then how the devil do they work it? How? Like this. Name, my lord. Give me the name. No. Yes, my lord. Yes. I want this name. Give me the name, my lad. The name. The name. The name. No. 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 Very good, my lad. Jolly good show. First class. You... You mean that... that that's it? We haven't been able to break you. I don't think we ever could. You mean it's... It's really over? All over. Except the congratulations. You've passed. Class one. Oh. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Come along, I'll buy you a drink. Two or three, if you like. I expect you feel you deserve one. And so, to the bar. Well done, my lord. Well done. Well done. Jolly good show. Right. How about another, sir? Not just a moment. I've had three straights already. You know, sir, I thought you were kidding me about the class one pass, I mean. Have I really got one? Take my word for it. Mind you, it was touch and go at one point. Uh, mind telling me why, sir? Well... Uh, well, I suppose it can't do any harm now that the whole thing's over. It was um, when we were questioning you about your contact in Hong Kong. I thought we had you a couple of times there, but you held out. Kept denying you had such a contact. Ah, that's good. Uh, Say again, please, Barker. Uh, yes, sir. 
Mind you, the fact that you don't have a card case in Hong Kong must have helped. <laughs> oh, but I do, sir. No. Afraid, sir? Well, you really did well then, didn't you? I didn't suspect you for one moment. It fooled us completely. Your drinks, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Mm. Yes, you covered the whole thing brilliantly. Who is he, by the way? Someone I know? Oh, I doubt it, sir. Name's George Criddle. What? Oh, Georgie? Then you know him. Well, if he's the chap I'm thinking of. Oh, tall chap, glasses, fair, moustache. That's him. George Criddle, tall, glasses, fair, moustache. Well, just imagine that. I say, it'd be great to get in touch with him after all this time. Um, where can I reach him? Well, I usually contact him at the Fu Young Bar. George Crittle, the Fu Young Bar, Hong Kong. <laughs> Must remember that, my lord. Cheers. Back at Mother's, Nino is still thinking it out. I, I can't see how they could have worked it, Mother. Hypnosis, perhaps. No, 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 no. I'd know. I, I'm sure I'd know. You were drugged. They got you under drugs? No, they didn't. They must have tricked the information out of you in some way. But that's impossible. Look, from the moment I went into that place, I was on guard. The whole time they were at me, I was watching every point. I, I didn't relax for one moment. I, I never told any. I... Yes? Oh. The bar. The bar. In the bar after it was all over. That's how it must have happened. In the bar, the one place where we were allowed to relax, to lower defenses, swap confidences. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Mother. Sorrow is a negative after the event emotion, Minnow. What we want now is positive thought. Attack. What do you suggest, Mother? I. Well, I. 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 I, I <coughs> Mother? Norton here, Mother. Uh, yes, Norton, what is it? I'm at Spiel's apartment. I called to give her my findings on the Casper and Minnow cases, sir. Which are? Negative, sir. Hmm. Only forensics will make a special trip to tell you that they haven't found anything. Get to the point, Norton. Or better still, let me speak to Mrs. Peel. That's the whole point, sir. She isn't here. What? And I found another of those cigarette stubs. The one with the gold filter. They have Turkish and... Yes, 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 yes. We don't want to hear about that filthy concoction. I can guess the rest. Some clothes are missing. That's right, sir. And don't and... tell me. And her toothbrush. That's all we need. Mother slammed the receiver back into its cradle and glared at Minot. Mrs. Peel is taking a refresher course. Where is that Center 53? You've got to remember, Minot. Well, I, I can't. I, I just can't. I don't know. Don't you understand? They've taken Emma Peel. She's different to you and Casper. She's brighter, sharper, more intelligent. Now, they may fool her for a while. That plan's clever enough to fool anyone for a while. But sooner or later, she's going to realize what's going on. And then, she won't last five seconds. You were taken to a country house? Yes. A large house? Yes. Old or new? Uh, old. How old? Uh, Fifty years? A uh, hundred? Think, Minnow, no, think there must be something. Now, just a moment. Now, you thought we were tricking you with Black is Death. You thought it was a test to make sure you wouldn't reveal the details of the course A7. Now, what if it all went wrong? What if you'd found yourself on trial for treason? What then? Then I'd contact Colonel Mannering and he'd clear me. He... Of course. I have a pigeon, a homing pigeon. Well, I can release it. It goes straight to, to Center 53. Oh, come on, get that pigeon and we may get Mrs. Peel and Colonel Mannering. Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers.
now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... Thick, Meadow, thick! There must be something! Oh, just a minute, Mother. You thought we were tricking you with Black as Death, didn't you, Manor? That was the brief. Mannering said that the course didn't really finish when we left the center, that there'd be other tests. Unexpected tests, to make sure that you wouldn't reveal any details of course A7. But what if it all went wrong? What if you found yourself on trial for treason? Well, then I'd contact Colonel Mannering and he'd clear me. Make sure that I... The pigeon. I have a pigeon, a homing pigeon. I can release it and it'll go straight to center 53. Colonel Mannering will then contact me within the hour. Within the hour? Well, it can't be too far away, then. As the crow flies. Now, get that pigeon, Minot, and we may get Mrs. Peel and Colonel Mannering. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 7, the final episode of this story in which John Steed drops in on Center 53, where he and Mrs. Peel call Colonel Mannering's bluff regarding a case of interrogation. John Steed and Mother had managed to piece a few fragments of the case together. They now knew that there was an organization which was using their own red tape to gain information from various military secret agents. They knew this organization was run by a man called Colonel Mannering and that his headquarters was an old house known as Center 53. But no one knew where this house was or how to get there until Minnow remembered the pigeon. John Steed called for a helicopter immediately and from a spare piece of ground near Minnow's apartment prepared for action. Right. Release her on a sign from me, Minnow. Right. And the best of luck, sir. Okay, pilot. Start her up. Very good, Mr. Steve. Ready? All ready. Right. Let her go now, Minnow. Minnow opened the wicker basket. The pigeon fluttered out, stretched its wings, and took to the sky. Right. Follow that pigeon. In the interrogation room at Center 53, Colonel Mannering paced up and down, slapping his riding crop against a well-polished black boot. The door opened, and two burly officers pushed Mrs. Peel into the room. Manners make it mad. Uh, come in and sit down, Mrs. Peel. That's a little more polite. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, we'll begin with all you know about John Steed. Oh, You've got to be joking. Neither of us could have that amount of time. Colonel Mannering slammed his riding crop down hard on the table. You will take this interrogation seriously, Mrs. Peel. There will be no sleep, no food, no water until you cooperate. Oh, can't I even have a cigarette? One of those awful ones that are custom made with Virginia and Turkish tobaccos and a preponderance of oriental herbs. What? You're careless the way you leave them around, aren't you? I should have thought with, with your training you'd not have been so careless. Yeah. You will talk. Tell me everything I want to know. Everything. Where is Steed at this moment? Where is he? John Steed was hanging on like grim death as the helicopter skidded about in the skies above Center 53. They'd lost sight of Minnow's pigeon. Oh, can't see it anywhere now, sir. I'd better go down. She must have gone to roost down there. Let's see what lies below, shall we? Right. The helicopter descended rapidly, Steve peering through a pair of binoculars. The pigeon had gone to roost, all right. 
It fluttered in and settled on the reception desk. Sergeant Rasker picked it up. I say, Rasker, someone in trouble? Yeah, it looks like it, Mr. Mullard. Uh, let's see. Yes, this is Minnow's pigeon, isn't it? The colonel will have to be informed at once. The colonel was still busy with Mrs. Peel. She was undergoing that wretched sound treatment. The truth, Mrs. Peel, the truth about John C. He doesn't know himself. How should I know? I'm not my partner's keeper. I thought I've always told you never to interrupt an interrogation, Rasko. Sorry, sir, but this is the ride. It's Minnows. I see. Right. Uh, one of your men, take over here. Right, Colonel. Mannering left the room and marched angrily along the corridor. Well, it's Minnows Pigeon, all right, Colonel. That I can see for myself. And there's been a helicopter following it. What? Just reported landing in the grounds. Steed. It must be John Steed. They're on to us. Get two men and cover the rear entrance to the bar. Uh, that's all very well, sir. But it's a big ass. There are at least a dozen other ways in. And there'll be an armed man on every one. Open the armory, all the guns you can find. I'll summon our trainees. Uh, sound the emergency alarms. This must be a general call. All right, sir. All right, sir. A few moments after that, bells rang throughout the centre, followed by the sounds of running feet as the men rushed to the main hall for instructions. Hey, what's going on? I say. Well, gentlemen, are we all here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Charlie, I see you. Good. Now, this is the nature of a surprise test. We have arranged for an intruder to break into the centre. Your task will be to deploy and fight him. We'll each be armed with a pistol. The pistol will be loaded with the blanks, of course. Uh, Rasker, how about the pistol? Yes, sir. When you find the intruder, you will shoot to kill. And there will be ten medit points for the lucky man. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, sir. Who's playing the intruder? A good friend of ours. He has just arrived by helicopter. You can't fail to recognize him. Bowler hat, impeccably dressed, carries an umbrella. Uh, some of you may not even know him. Uh, Steed. John Steed. Oh, yeah. 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 Off you go, then, chap. Never get ten points for the lucky man who kills him. Mrs. Peel, in the interrogation room, heard the rumpus going on down the corridor. She said to the officer guarding her, Shouldn't we go and join him? My orders were to see that you were remained here, alone. But those were alarm bells. This is an emergency. I really think we shouldn't be excluded. Let's go Stay and... where you are. That's an order. Now, don't get up or move. Oh, don't be such a silly soldier. That gun's not loaded. Oh, yes, it is. And I have no hesitation in firing it. Are you really serious? Of course. But this is a training center. This isn't for real, Just you know? stay where you are, or you'll find out. In that case, I think I shall have to accept your challenge. Mrs. Peel, who had been sitting calmly on a wooden chair, rose to her feet and, grasping the chair back, flung it at him. When the revolver went off, Mrs. Peel moved in quickly. <laughs> the fight didn't last long. Mrs. Peel got a good hold and threw the guard across the room. The door and stole quietly up the passage just as John Steed opened one of the windows at the back of the house. There was a guard in the room. Stay where you are. Don't move. Come out from behind the curtain. The guard advanced and bent down to see what had slumped to the floor. He drew the curtains apart. John Steed said, Good afternoon. And hit him with the steel rim of his bowler. Then chaos began to reign. <laughs> Mrs. Peel, coming up the passage, ran straight into Raska. Uh, here, here, Mrs. Peel, what are you doing? All right? Sorry, got a thing against firearms today. Mrs. Uh, Peel did a splendid high kick and knocked Raska's gun down the passage. Uh, a few moments later, Raska followed it. Uh, John Steed, coming up the passage, stepped neatly over Raska's body and picked up his gun just as Mullard and a crowd of other men raced up. Uh, uh, hands up, Steed. Steed obliged. I say, but we're supposed to kill him, aren't we? I saw him first. No, I did. Now, no, just no, a minute, just a minute. minute. Hold on, hold it's on. Mine. It's mine. It's ten points for the kill, isn't it? Well, then, there are five of us here. Why don't we all shoot at once and claim two points each? Uh, I say, that's oh, good. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Right. All right, right. then. I think so. One, two, three. No! No! Mrs. Peel dashed forward, did a great leaping roll over the group of officers and landed in front of Seed. No! I say. Those guns are loaded with real bullets. Oh, come now, Emma. You just want the ten points for yourself. Look, we've all been duped. This whole course is a fake. A She's fake. right, you know. Jolly good deal. Excellent. Testing their gullibility, eh? Trick them. 
See how they react to the persuasive talk of the enemy, eh? Mannering is the enemy. I'm telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Is she? Uh, don't forget that a ten merit points at stake, gentlemen. Those guns are loaded with live ammunition. Please believe me. Very convincing, but not quite convincing enough. Eh, hey, gentlemen? Uh, might I make a suggestion? There's a simple way to see who's bluffing. Uh, you, uh, Mullard, isn't it? Uh, point your gun at Colonel Mannering and pull the trigger. I'll count to three. One... Two. All right. Why not? No, 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 no! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Mannering dived to the floor as the bullet crashed into a light. Steed stepped forward and hit Mannering hard on the back of the neck with his umbrella. Gentlemen, shall we adjourn to the bar? I need a drink, don't you, Mrs. Peel? Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omen. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our conclusion of The Avengers. And don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow for another adventure from The Saint, going live at 5pm GMT. You can email me on brett at toradate.co.uk and I'd love to know your thoughts on the show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week. And I'll see you next time on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.